We set up the NIST server, now let's set up the NIST client. Now we're on um, what's going to become our NIST client. And with our NIST server set up, um, you know, to be our centralized database for authentication, now I can have multiple, you know, clients or machines and I can create my passwords once on the NIST server and all my NIST clients can log in with those accounts. So there's just a, a few steps we need to take uh, to set up each client to use our NIST server. Um, and let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. It's a little bit bigger there. One, verify basic connectivity to the network and NIST server. Check DNS, IP, and host settings. Make sure Network Manager is installed. Um, one of the first things I want to do is check my IP settings, and if you're static, that's fine, but make sure it's compatible. Um, you know, basic connectivity, of course, up to layer three of the OSI is, is, is going to be a requirement um, to utilize uh, higher level services and things. So um, in this case, I'm using DHCP. I just use DH client, and I'm 192.0.7.13.18, and my NIST server I know is 192.0.7.13.15. Okay, so I have that set up. And with that set up, we need to install a few things, just like we did with the server. Two, install port map. Use sudo apt-get install port map. So on the client, again, I, I want to install port map. I'm going to do sudo apt-get install port map. And it'll just go download uh, those packages. Three, update port map. Use sudo update-rc.d port map defaults 10. And now I just want to update. Um, let's see. Update the, the defaults there. Okay. Um, Four, install this. Use sudo apt-get install nest. And the next part, again, you know, this may fail the first time through. Let me go ahead and clear the screen here. And I'm going to, because I haven't, you know, it hasn't installed the configuration files yet. And I'm going to have to modify that data so I can find the NIST server. But I'm going to go ahead and install the NIST service um, so I can get those configuration files in place. So sudo apt-get install and NIST. And it'll ask me what my domain is. And remember, we called it ultimate. Battlestars.com was our domain. And again, this may toil for some time. Okay, so now this is set up and installed. So um, I have the things in place for basic connectivity. Now we just need to modify the configuration file so that it can find and utilize our NIST server for centralized network authentication. Um, Five, edit the forward slash Etsy forward slash hosts file. Add the NIST server's host name and fully qualified domain name to the client's host file to harden it against DNS failure. Use sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash hosts. So the next thing I want to do is modify um, one of the basic configuration files on any system, be it server, uh, you know, or client. In this case, the host file. And if I'm using DNS, I wouldn't have to do this, but by doing this, I, I'll harden it against DNS failure. So that way, if the DNS server goes down, it'll still be able to find the IP address of my NIST server. So to do that, I'm just going to add the IP to the host file. Oops, let me do sudo nano. Can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Can't talk and type at the same time. Um, let me do... the IP of my NIST server, and I'll give it the host name, which is Pegasus, and I'll also do the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name,
ultimatebattlestars.com. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so that adds it to the host file, and if we want to test it, I get my echo replies. So I can resolve the name from my host file, and a litimate. I got an extra R there. Okay, so I've tested it and verified I can resolve it. Six. Edit the etcyp.conf file. Use sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash yp.conf. Now, the next file I want to edit, um, again, that's if I can manage to type and talk at the same time. The next file I want to edit is um, the yp.conf file. So, Milus Pre, where I laugh. Um, the domain is ultimate battlestars.com and the server by hostname as defined on my host file and my DNS server is Pegasus and the FQDN ultimate battlestars.com okay and I just want to save this and yes okay so um you can also like do the IP address of the name server there's you know examples in that file um but in this case notice I just did the domain ultimate battlestars.com server pegasus ultimate battlestars.com okay 7 edit the etsy nsswitch.com file use sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash nsswitch.conf now the next file we need to modify or edit is going to be um, the NS switch file. Okay, so I'm going to go and like most files. These are in the Etsy folder. Yes, I know it's etc., but it's just the lazy way to say it is Etsy. It's kind of fun too. Less syllables. All right, this, 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 and I want to save it. So for password group and shadow, I want to specify. In this case, I'm going to be using this authentication, and mm -hmm, and yes, and save that. Okay. Eight. Modify the permissions on the default home folder so Nautilus and X Windows can allow users to log in graphically to a GNOME desktop. Use sudo chmod777 forward slash home. And at this point, we're almost ready to reboot, but um, if I'm just going to log in without X Windows, then I can just reboot and, and log in and start using my accounts. However, if I want to allow, you know, my NIST clients, um, you know, people from my NIST server, or, you know, accounts on my NIST server to log into my NIST clients and get a graphical desktop and use X Windows, there's one more additional step I should take. And that is... Um, See how I, you know, I have a home directory locally on this machine here, C Germany. But remember, we created the users, user one and user two, um, on, you know, on the NIST server. They don't have directories yet, so there wouldn't be permission. And if I were to log in graphically, um, I'd have problems. If I log in, you know, at run level three, not an issue because, um, you know, or, or without run, trying to run X Windows, I don't have to worry about it. But if Nautilus tries to run and X Windows tries to run, and those user accounts don't have permission to create directories on the client, then you know I'm going to get errors and things. So to take care of that, let's just chmod the home directory and change the permissions on it. And you know the reason I'm saying that, if you look, let me go find home here and highlight it. And if you look, notice that yeah, okay, root, you know he's the owner and he's also the group, and he has read, write, execute. But what about in this case, you know, well, that's the user account. The group account only has read and execute, so he's read only and others read only. And I just want to ch mod that. And you know, you could tweak the permissions however you like, but for now I'm just gonna take the easy um I'm not following the principle of least privilege, but I'm taking the easy way. Sudo ch mod 777 home, you know, it's gonna go in and tweak it later and figure out what you want to do with groups and things, but if I do a long listing what this will do is it'll give Nautilus permission to create directories and folders for people that want to log in graphically. 
Okay, see, so now, so now they have read, write, and execute. And so that way they'll be able to create home folders and things on the NIST client workstation using accounts that exist in the password file on the NIST server. So it's a centralized database of authentication, sort of like Active Directory. Um, and there's also LDAP, but that's, that's for another time. LDAP server. Nine, reboot the NIST client. Use sudo reboot. Okay, so at this point I'm, I'm ready. Um, I've done the things that I need to do, and really I just need to reboot. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then... Alright, so I've rebooted my, my NIST client. I'm going to log in as C Germany this time, which is the root account, and I'm just test something. My old password on the NIST uh, client was different from the one on the NIST server. But if everything works the way it should, I should now no longer be able to authenticate with that old password. So like if I type in, this was the original password right here. It should not authenticate. It says authentication failure. And the reason is, is now instead of using you know a local password file and authenticating on the local client, now it's using the NIST server. So what I have to do instead is I have to type in the, you know, the C Germany password from the NIST server to give me kind of root privileges and things. So, um, and that password was just lowercase password. All right, so I'm just going to type in lowercase password, and now I can log in. So I know that you know my my NIST server is actually functioning um, properly here. Ten. Test the NIST client's connection to the NIST server. Use ypcat password. And there's a tool that we can use real quick just to test some things. So I'm just going to do, um, let me see if I need to zoom in just a little bit here. I'm going to do um, ypcat password. And then I'll just load or read the password file off the server. And by the way, this can also be, you know, be maybe one of the weaknesses of NIST. Um, you want to protect who's allowed to to use ypcat and load the password file because otherwise they could you know be reading passwords and things from your servers but there are ways of doing that and hiding that and obfuscating it and encrypting it and there's lightweight direct access protocol you can do LDAP servers but that's for another day and another time for now we just want a simple way to use NIST to create centralized authentication on a Linux network so we can have Ubuntu workstations, clients and Ubuntu server and this way we can create the user account only once on the server and then we can log in on any of our workstations using that password and that ID. Um, all right, so that's everything's the way it look, looks like it's working the way it should there. Um, I'm going to log out real quick. 11. Now take your spiffy new Linux client server architecture for a spin and kiss your old peer to peer blues goodbye. I'm going to test some of my other accounts, all right? And these are ones that don't have a desktop created, but um, these are accounts that they don't exist on the NIST client on the workstation, but they were created on the NIST server. So if everything's working properly, I should be able, even though I'm on a different computer, I should be able to log in using user accounts and passwords from my NIST server, and they should be able to create a desktop. And for these guys, I just used the password to pass. And, and there I am. I'm, so even though I'm not on my server, I'm on my NIST client or workstation. Um, I have centralized authentication because all my user accounts that are on that one server, I can type them in on any workstation, any machine configured as a NIST client, and log in with that password and that user account ID. Um, let's try another one. We'll do user2. Okay, and I can log in. So there you have it. There are other ways of implementing centralized authentication like uh, Active Directory does in a Windows Microsoft environment. But this is a very simple way. It's been around for quite some time and it works with Ubuntu and Fedora and all of the, you know, the free flavors of Linux that are out there. So if you have a small peer-to-peer -peer network or even maybe a slightly larger network, this might be a good solution for you in terms of allowing you to have a server where you can manage you know, user accounts and passwords all in one place, but then have all of your other machines, your workstations, use that one server for authentication.